Hey friends, it's the Drone Pilot Expert, and here today I'm going to cover installing the Fat Shark version 3 teleporter a video transmitter onto a Walkera Runner 250. <clears throat> and so basically, um, I ordered this package. I didn't order the stock Walkera video transmitter or antenna. Um, I saw a good deal out there, a combo package, and I thought I'd pick it up. I don't really have any friends or anyone around who um, knows much about these kinds of drones. I am a drone pilot myself, so I thought it'd be a good package to kind of get into this little niche, the racing niche, which I'm very interested in, especially the FPV. Um, so let's just go through some of the problems I have and hopefully answer uh, some of the questions you have or solve some of the problems that you have. I'm sure they'll be the same problems I had. So first we can see that the Fat Shark video transmitter is nothing like the original or stock video transmitter. So the original video transmitter would actually mount down in here and we can see there's actually some screw nut certs in here and this is where the video transmitter would mount. And then we have a circular opening here at the top of the top panel. And that would be a circular polarized, polarized antenna and it would sit up about this high, which isn't very high at all. So we can see that this Fat Shark has this different style antenna, which isn't good for drone flying. So I definitely would recommend not getting this style antenna. You need to get the circular polarized polarized type antenna. And that's going to give you way greater range. And on this drone, it's supposed to give you a range of around a kilometer. <clears throat> so and basically, since I couldn't mount the video transmitter underneath, I went ahead and mounted the video transmitter up where you see it right there on top um, using some Velcro which has a double-sided sticky tape on it. So and you can see I ran the wires uh, underneath from the back of the transmitter here. Here's the back of the transmitter where I plugged in the camera and the noise reducing filter plug. Um, both of those plugs will go in the back here and the noise filter reducer that I'm talking about I have mounted down here on the bottom so on what this is going to do is accept the battery plug and then a plug running from the video transmitter you can see I ran it here and then up through the rear So and then also I did try to mount this noise filter in a different place but the batter the uh, battery cable that's coming off is extremely short. So if even if you put a GoPro on the front the center of gravity moves so far back that you literally have to move the battery to a position like this and the plug doesn't even reach if you have this attached. So I have this on Velcro down here and I guess when I fly with the GoPro for now um, I just take the Velcro off um, and plug it in back here and just kind of let it hang I guess so probably not well designed I guess I can run the wire up top on the battery when I am flying it that way but the design on this um, isn't very good for this type of drone or this model at least so I definitely would recommend getting the original Walkera a video transmitter and OSD package. I would definitely stay away from getting this aftermarket Fat Shark piece. So you're going to get the nice clean mounting down here um, where the transmitter would go and then the antenna is just going to fit in here just perfect. And then you're going to get the, the additional range. So let's go over the front camera too. We'll go ahead and unplug it because you're not going to be able to see what the light's on. So 
So, and this is the camera that comes with the Fat Shark uh, Teleporter V3. Um, if you notice the gap here um, is way wider than the original Walkera camera setup. So the, Wal the Walkera camera setup that you'd get from the factory would actually be more towards the edge um, of that box all the way around. So and also uh, when you open up this this camera setup it comes with the tiniest screws for this mount mount and literally you can't even use the screws they're I mean they're literally millimeters long not long like these ones they're they're like millimeters short um, and the screws I got from here are for here and I actually got these screws to work was out of the bottom of a laptop so I have an old IBM laptop sitting around and I took out these two screws and then ground down the width of the heads and they actually go in this hole that you'll see right there and they actually screw down inside that recessed area and then there's a beveled edge in there that catches the screw so and the screws were actually long enough that they reach the camera and actually make it semi-tight but do let me show you it is just a hair loose so we'll see if you can see this I'll try to hold it tight here yeah I know it's hard to see but it is just a little bit loose so it's really hard to get that tight especially when you're screwing the screw into plastic um, and as you're tightening both sides and trying to make that camera tight I mean you, you run the risk of cracking this frame so that's definitely not the best setup either so another reason why I'd recommend getting the stock um, Walkera camera so you're not gonna have these problems with mounting this and basically having to jimmy rig it the way I did <clears throat> um, but at the least uh, this is a hundred and twenty degree a field of vision camera it's 720p inside the v3 goggles it's pretty much black and white looks like um, we can see where an SD card can snap right in here or click right in here I'll try to get that um, and then you push that button to start recording so basically you push the button to start recording go up and fly and you gotta push the button to stop it so um, but at least we can see that's pretty much how I mounted it. So, and then the uh, camera cable um, I have right here. I did go ahead and kind of uh, tie it up. And then I ran it up through the circuit board by the uh, speed controller. And then on the other side here, we can see it. Um, I run it up above the speed controller and receiver. And then out the back right here and plug it into the video transmitter. So and that's how this setup's going to work. You're going to take the camera, plug it into the video transmitter. The video transmitter then is going to plug into the noise filter, which in turn will plug into the battery. Grab the battery here. You plug in the battery into the noise filter. And that's how you're going to get power to the system. So let's go ahead and uh, plug it in. Um, just so you can see the lights on. So you know, as you can see, this uh, red light comes on here. And we have power. So I'll unplug that. Red light goes off. And so that's how I got that to mount. So and let's go into the uh, GoPro mount real quick. Of course, the uh, top of this GoPro mount uh, doesn't really go with any of the the uh, GoPro brackets that I have. Basically, this is the tripod bracket, um, just with the tripod screw on the bottom. Um, and what I did was just take a Phillips screw. Um, basically, I popped out these two front rubber grommets out of the top bracket here because there's two brackets to this to this movable frame you see 
so the GoPro sits up on this mount and can actually shake and move. So I took these two grommets out real quick, um, just from the top, and then I ran a screw up through the top frame and screwed it into the tripod. I did put a washer on each side, a real wide washer, so it catches the bracket or the uh, carbon fiber piece good. And then I also put some uh, plastic type foam in between the washer and the bracket so I get less vibration, um, especially for the camera. <clears throat> so and that's pretty much that setup. So and then also I did have some trouble finding out um, how to fix the flip of death. So basically what happens is, is when you go to take off, you'll increase throttle like this and three of the propellers or two of the propellers will go before the other ones and it literally just flips right over. It's like the front two will spin up and it flips over. Um, there's some kind of delay at the beginning so basically what you do is you need to set um, a minimum trim where the propellers are always moving so that way they're all spinning when you finally uh, um, apply elevation um, throttle you know so when you're ready to go up the propellers are actually spinning all four already and then you give it more throttle and off and you take off you do have a little bit more trouble decreasing altitude but trust me it's better than the flip of death so um, and this is how you do that <clears throat> so let's go ahead and turn our controller on and then we're gonna plug our drone in so when the red lights flash once it's binded correctly the red lights turn off and stop flashing uh, we can see our headlights are on here in the front and now we have no LEDs on in the back so and what we're gonna do is we need to set it to where we hit the the home switch or the hold switch this one and it's gonna make the propellers turn on so I'm gonna arm it here just like that so we're gonna make this switch give you the ability to turn those propellers on and off and that way when you take off basically the process you're gonna use is you're gonna arm it so let's disarm LED turns off so let's say we're ready to take off let's arm it LEDs come on we'll do our hold button now all four of our propellers will be spinning and now we can actually give it some throttle and then when we're ready to land we land and then we go ahead and turn it off so to set that up let's see if we can get a good shot here of this there we go so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit enter and there's it's blink system up here so what we want to do is we want to go press down twice and make it blink function up here so function is blinking now we're gonna hit enter and then we're gonna go down to throttle hold we're going to push enter and that's where we can activate it so typically when typically it would be here on an inhibit basically but we're going to switch it to activate the state so that means that there's no throttle hold INH, but ACT, that means that we've activated the throttle hold. Now we can use this just like that. So 
So, and that's how that works. So, all in all, like I said, um, I probably wouldn't go with the Fat Shark video transmitter. Let me grab the goggles here. So on the goggles, I would definitely go with the, the circular antenna instead of this one. Um, on the drone, I would also go for the circular antenna instead of the pole type antenna, this one. I would not get this video transmitter. I would get the original Walkera video transmitter. And also I would get the original... Let's pull the battery out here. I would get the original camera instead of the Fat Shark camera. Um, but besides those things, um, it works great so far. It definitely moves like a NASCAR. Um, I worked in auto racing for a long time, so I would not say this is a Porsche. This is definitely more of a heavier style, heavier style of handling, um, although it is very aggressive. So the motors are very strong and it can go very fast, probably 50 to 60 miles an hour in a, in a good um, tailwind. Um, I definitely would rather see or re rather recommend you go with 1080p instead of the 720p. Inside of the goggles it is kind of a small image so you definitely want to make sure that you're getting um, the most visual clarity you can get if you want to fly FPV. So this one is going to be a little tougher more like playing uh, Sega Genesis instead of playing uh, Xbox One and that's about it. So I hope those uh, answer any of those problems you have with the Fat Shark setup with the Walkera. And thanks for watching.